When it comes to new hair loss treatments, very few, if any, have generated as much excitement as PP405. We literally can't remember the last time hair loss forums and social media got lit up like this for a new product. This thing is being hailed as the possible end of hair loss. But is there any truth to these claims? Is there any truth to this hype? Is PP405 the real deal? You'll find out in this video. So the company behind PP405 is Pelagia Pharmaceuticals, headquartered in California. Founded in 2018, the company is a relative newbie to the field, but that hasn't stopped them from raising over $30 million in funding, all of it towards developing PP405. This figure includes a recent round of $16 million, led by GV, formerly Google Ventures, with contributions from other notable investment firms. Now, Pelage isn't your typical pharmaceutical company in the sense that they don't have a wide research pipeline. Hair loss is their business model, and PP405 is their star product, or potential star product to be precise. Pelage's focus is regenerative medicine. This is different from the classical approach where you're treating the symptoms of a disease with medications. Instead, regenerative medicine tries to use the body's own healing mechanisms to repair, replace, or regenerate damaged tissues or organs. A primary target of regenerative medicine are stem cells. These are specialized cells that have the unique ability to develop into various types of cells. This sets them apart from the typical cells which have a specific function and limited lifespan. In the context of hair loss, the focus is on the hair follicle stem cells which are responsible for regenerating and maintaining hair follicles. They also play a key role in regulating the hair growth cycle. So what's the science behind PP405? Well, this isn't being marketed as just another topical but something fundamentally new. A treatment that reactivates the stem cells of dormant hair follicles, essentially bringing them back to life. So how does it achieve this? The key is its ability to modulate a specific part of the cell's energy system known as the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier or MPC. By inhibiting MPC, PP405 upregulates an enzyme called lactase dehydrogenase or LDH. Hair follicle stem cells are particularly sensitive to LDH and its upregulation helps push dormant hair follicles back into that active antigen growth phase. So in plain English, PP405 wakes up these dormant stem cells, making them produce new hair. That's the theory, at least. The phase one clinical trial, which concluded in January of 2024, demonstrated that PP405 was well tolerated, in other words, safe, following topical application. The phase one trial also served as a so-called proof of concept. One of its key findings was a statistically significant increase in the KI67 signal in hair follicle stem cells. KI67 is a well-known biomarker for cell proliferation, indicating that the treated cells were actively dividing and multiplying. This increase happened after just seven days of treatment with a 0.05% concentration of PP405. The researchers also found evidence of newly emerging hair germs, another sign that the hairs were transitioning from a resting into a growing phase. So for what it's worth, the patient volunteers also provided positive feedback on the drug. Now, Pelage have moved to the phase 2A stage, which assesses the potential side effects of the drug while also measuring its concentration in the plasma. This phase 2A trial compares PP405 topical gel at 0.05% strength to a placebo vehicle solution. The study is recruiting men and women with androgenetic alopecia ages 18 to 55. The males will be between scores three and five on the Norwood Hamilton scale, all with hair loss of the crown. It will only last 28 days, so we probably won't be getting any clinical effectiveness data. The placebo group will be serving as the control for the safety comparison, not for effectiveness. Okay guys, so looking forward, if the results of this trial are positive, the company will go on to the phase 
2B. This will probably be several months rather than weeks and it will also evaluate at your clinical efficacy, albeit at a limited scale. So hair counts, density, thickness, and so on. A reasonable estimate is that this will be completed by early 2026. After this, we have the phase three trial, which will be the large comprehensive study involving hundreds, if not thousands of participants. The drug will also be compared to other existing topicals, possibly minoxidil. Here we'll have a definitive answer as to PP405's ability to regrow hair and how it ranks among the other well-known treatments. We obviously don't have a crystal ball, but given how the clinical trials work, a reasonable estimate is that phase three will be completed by 2028. FDA approval would probably come either late 2028 or 2029. Again, these are kind of best case scenarios, assuming that all goes well. But at a minimum, we're probably four years away from the drug hitting the market. Okay, so what's our take on all of this? On the one hand, the science behind PP405 is solid. Stimulating hair follicle stem cells via metabolic pathways, and particularly the MPC pathway, makes sense biologically. Pelage as a company also looks like the real deal. They have some solid players backing them, notably Google Ventures, which is a venture capital arm of Google's parent company. We we're also very encouraged by the safety results so far. We suggest that topical application will be safe without any serious systemic absorption. But on the other hand, we were a bit disappointed by just how wide the net has been cast. The phase 2A trial is recruiting both men and women with pattern hair loss. And according to Pelage, PP405 may also have applications for other forms of alopecia, including telogen effluvium and hair loss from chemotherapy. So it's not really specific to pattern hair loss. It's really hard to imagine a drug with such a large field of applications being particularly effective in male pattern hair loss, which is fundamentally driven by scalp compression and fibrosis, which then reduces the blood flow. Another sign that this won't be a cure by any stretch of the word is the choice of men who were recruited into that phase 2A trial. They all had hair loss at the vertex, the same patient population as the original finasteride and minoxidil studies. If PP405 was the end of baldness as we know it, they could have just recruited men with frontal hair loss, particularly recession of the hairline, which is much more resistant to treatments in general. We'll have more information when we see the participant recruitment criteria for phases 2B and 3, though I'll be surprised if they changed them. While we can understand the excitement that PP405 has generated, we would recommend caution. Statistically, looking at what happened with other promising hair loss treatments of the past decade, it's far more likely than not that this drug will never even make it to market. This is just the reality of drug development. Most projects do fail. And if PP405 does succeed, we would be surprised if it's dramatically more effective than any of the other existing treatments. The problem is none of these new drug developments for male pattern baldness are really getting to the root cause of the problem. We know the scalp dermal layer gets compressed by scalp tension, which leads to fibrosis and a restriction of blood supply to the hair follicle bulb. Finasteride is so effective because it stops this process of fibrosis. But other treatments that don't focus on this critical pathway will never be an effective way to stop male pattern baldness at the root cause. This is why we always end up disappointed with these new developments. And that's why my first line of defense is always the grow band. It helps reduce that scalp compression and restore natural healthy blood flow to the places where it's needed. So guys, either way, we'll keep an eye on this story and we'll update you accordingly on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, I look forward to hearing your thoughts down below Hit me with any question or comment that you might have. I respond to all the good questions. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.